So today, let's look at how we created this brownish goldish vintage look using the free version of DaVinci Resolve with free film grain plus free footage which you can download from my website. So stick around and I'll show you how to do it. So if you're new to the channel, this channel is all about DaVinci Resolve. We go through color grading and some tips and tricks to help you learn how to use the program a lot better. Sometimes we go through editing when I'm not lazy, but generally I'm pretty lazy, so there is not that much editing on this channel. First off, before I start, if you ever want to skip ahead, I'm going to leave chapters down below. So if I'm talking about something that's not interesting to you, make sure to use the chapters and you can skip ahead because I do a lot of ranting, so chapters are always good. So this came about recently when someone messaged me asking if they could create a vintage look in Resolve using the free version because I had a previous video of a vintage look and my answer was you can, but of course I can't say it over messaging, it's way too complicated. So anyway, I thought I'd make a video on it. So now we can create a vintage look in the free version of Resolve because in the other one we did use film grain and some other emulations that Resolve has in the um, studio version, not the free version. So anyway, let's go through it and learn how to do it in the free version. It's actually quite simple, but we're gonna do a different look. We're not gonna go through the same look because otherwise it would be quite boring. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna darken a little bit. So let's go to our brightest area, which is this area here. Let's move this across a little bit, a little more space. Alrighty, so let's bring our gain down to around about here looks pretty good. Now let's bring our lift down There we go, we're gonna dark out a little image going on here. Looks pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some contrast out to give it a more washed out milky look. So around about there looks pretty good. Now, when you remove contrast, you're actually removing saturation. So that means we need to put more saturation back into this image. So let's go down our saturation here and let's add a fair bit in because we took a lot of contrast out. So about there looks pretty good. Okay, so we have a good start. So let's make a new node. So Alt S if you're using a Windows computer, which will create a serial node. Now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna start working towards that brown look. So if you're painting a picture and you wanted brown, you would use orange and blue. So what I'm gonna do first off is I'm gonna warm this entire image up. So you come down to your temp over here and you push it right to about, let's say, I think about 450 looks pretty good. And as you can see, our image is warmed up a fair bit. Now what you wanna do, is you wanna get that brownie look. So let's go down to our RGB mixer. Now, we don't normally use the RGB mixer, but it is a very good little mixer. And so I suggest familiarizing yourself with it. It's very handy. And it is the thing that we need to make that look. So what we're gonna do is, let's go to our red channel here, and let's just push it up a tiny little bit. And as you can see, we have a little bit more brownie going on. Now let's go to our blue channel and bring it down just one. And as you can already see, we have that kind of vintagey look. We're looking pretty good so far. Alrighty, I just remembered <laughs> one thing that I forgot to do. We have to make this image into a better color space. So what we're gonna do here, sorry, I should have said this at the start, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the way your node is set out. So come down to your settings down here, primary settings, and then go to your color management Color Science, we wanna be DaVinci YRGB Color Manage. Then in Resolve Color Management Preset, you wanna be DaVinci Wide Gamut, okay? And then go to Save, and there we go. <laughs> Our image looks completely different, and it's a lot better, and it is a better color space to work in, and it's a better starting point. Instead of having to do it all yourself, DaVinci works that for you, and trust me, this is something I always do, so I'm sorry I forgot that. But anyway, that's fine. Let's create a new node. Now we're gonna work in parallel nodes because it's easy to keep track of where you are. So we'll make two more, Alt-P twice. Give ourselves a little bit more room here. Now clean that up. Now what we're gonna do here is I wanna bring out this light here and I wanna give it a golden look. And this is to separate this from everything else in the image. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to the qualifier. Now if you wanna learn more about the qualifier, I've made a video on it where I go in depth about it. So make sure to check that out. There'll be like a little link up here somewhere. Plus I'll leave a link below. So have a look at that. So just qualify area. So if the qualifier doesn't show up, left click down here, qualifier. Now what you wanna do is you just left click on the part you wanna qualify and then shift H will bring up your selection. 
or if you're new, view, highlight, highlight, that'll do the exact same thing. So I just want this area here, but I also want the tops of the leaves here. This will give it like a nice kind of um, warm feel to the image and also it'll really highlight the plant and bring it out. Otherwise this might look a little bit flat if this is overpowering it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna soften this right out, get rid of a lot of this so we don't need the black areas. So come down your luminance and just bring that out. Now you wanna soften it out a bit though. That looks pretty good and bring up your highs. It's basically, that's what we want to be hitting, yeah? Now we want to smooth this out. So you want to denoise it and you want to blur it out and then just clean up those blacks a little bit. And again, if you want a more in-depth look at it, I would highly recommend checking out the video, but today we're not going to do that. We're just going to go through it quickly. So I'm just going to blur it out, clean it up a little bit. And this is just to help soften it up. So we're not going to get like a big blob of mess. So shift H again to get out of that selection. But let's bring this up a lot. So let's go to our secondaries and in highlights, let's bring it up a fair bit. And then let's push it towards that golden look. And again, bring it up even more. So something about there looks pretty good. Maybe just bring it down a little bit more. And again, it's just working around until you find something that you like. So that looks pretty good. So let's go big screen, control F. So this is our image beforehand. Now this is our image afterwards. And as you can see, we're really bringing out that golden strip. So that looks really cool. So now what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna soften it up a little bit. Cause when you shoot film, you do get a nice blooming look, which means like you're creating that kind of nice soft light. Let's go to our sharpen tool and we'll blur tool and then just bring it up a little bit. And again, let's go full screen. So beforehand and afterwards. And as you can see, we have a nice soft look. And as you can see, this is our selection. So it's looking really good. Now in this node here, we're actually gonna create a outside node. So Alt O, now we're gonna come back to this node, so don't worry about it at the moment. Let's go to our next node, so node four. Now we're gonna darken our image and then we're gonna break our image. Now I know that sounds kind of strange, but once you see it, you'll understand. So in our fourth node, what we're gonna do, go to our primaries and then we're gonna to go to our lift and we're gonna bring it down a fair bit. So we brought that down a lot. Now we're gonna to go to our secondaries again and we're gonna bring those shadows up. We're gonna bring them up a fair bit because we've crushed those blacks so much. Alrighty, so let's make this image again big. So control F. So this is our image prior to working on the node. Now this is our image afterwards. And what we've done is we've created a softer look. Since we've brought all those dark areas down, we've really emphasized this golden light here, which is looking really good. So at the moment, we haven't got that vintage look we're going for, but there's a couple more steps that is gonna bring the whole thing together. So just bear with me. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna give it more a vintage framing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up the timeline. We're gonna go output blanking and we're gonna work in one, three, three. Now, as you can see, we have this line here. So what we need to do is we need to zoom in. So that's easy fix. So come across to your input sizing and you wanna be in the second one. And we just wanna zoom in till we get rid of those lines. Now I think it is a little off center. So I'm just gonna pan across a little bit. And because we've zoomed in, we have actually have a lot of space to work with. So that looks pretty good. So let's go to Alt F. So image is looking pretty good. Now, just a couple more things to help it bring it together. So let's go back to that outside node. Now on this node here, we're gonna actually blur it out. So come across to your blur and sharpen, and then just bring it up just a little bit. Now Alt F, and let's see what it looks like. So this is beforehand, it looks quite sharp, and this is afterwards. And what we've really done is to just soften that image out. So we have this nice kind of filmy, soft look. Now, we might have gone too far, but I think we'll just leave it for now. We'll call it good, because I think it looks pretty nice. So now what I want to do is I feel like this area here is a little too bright. So let's go to our last node. And in this node, let's use a gradient tool 
and we'll just soften it right out. So shift H to bring up your selection or what you're using the gradient tool on and come down to primaries and just bring it down a little bit and then go to your gamma and just bring it down and again soften it out just a little bit till you have something you'd like. So beforehand and then afterwards and that's just helping to put more attention on this area here and then this area here. So we have this nice little look here. So now to bring this all together, we need to chuck some film grain on. Now, like I said at the start of the video, we are gonna use free film grain. So I did a previous video about using free film grain. So I'll leave a link below on how you can get it. There's a website. Now it's completely free. You can opt to pay for it, but you don't have to. I have no affiliation whatsoever. So it's up to you guys what you wanna do. So anyway, you have your film grain here. Once you downloaded it, then put it into your media pool. Now just bring it in. Now as you can see, it's too short. So what we can do is we can just copy and paste it a few thousand times, and then we can turn it into a compound node and we'll call it grain. Now that way we have very long film grain and we don't have to keep copying and paste it. So at the moment, as you can see, we're actually covering our entire image so we don't know what we're looking at. So the easy thing to do is make sure your film grain is highlighted, go up to inspector and then under composite, composite mode, you wanna change that to overlay. So now we have this film grain look and look how good that looks. It's really nice and soft. It looks like old film, plus it's completely free what we're using. And every now and again, we get these nice dirt marks. Now, if you want your film grain to be even bigger, more pronounced, what you can do is come up to zoom and then zoom it in. Now you have even larger film grain. How good does that look? And this look is completely achieved using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Now there's one more thing that I actually wanna do, and I didn't do this in the last video, but I'm gonna do it in this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this image up and I'm gonna change a couple of frame rates. So it doesn't matter where you do it. And I'm also going to take a couple of chunks out of the footage because I want to give it that kind of broken feel. Now in our first one, I'm going to change this clip speed and under frames per second. Let's change this to 18 because in the old Super 8 cameras, before they went to 24, they were actually 18. Now in this one, let's change it to 11 and we'll leave this one as normal. Actually, we'll change it to, so it's slightly off. So say 22, and this one, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We'll change it to 18, 17, that's fine. And we'll just change this one to, let's say 14. I'll just make this one a little bit off. Actually, we'll leave it as is. Alrighty, now let's get our film grain back. So let's play this back, but let's play it back in the color page. That way it'll keep repeating. So let's go to our first one. So again, control left and go big screen. Now pressing spacebar to play it back. And as you can see, all those little cuts that we've made and those frame rate changes we've made, we've got that nice stuttering film look. And how good does that look? We've got this great vintage look. And of course you can go further with this. You can make it darker if you want. You can brighten it up. You can make it softer. You can make it sharp. You can do whatever you want. It's completely up to you guys. I recommend experimenting it. You could make it even greener. Again, anything you wanna do, just go and do it. I mean, that's what color grading is all about. It's all about experimenting. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'd really much appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. I've been Drew from Gringo Productions, and thanks again.